you were to, you were talking about Paris earlier on, yeah, uh, and about the fact that um, you know the uh, French culture is very much into you know uh, being slim, skinny, and uh, being overweight or fat. It's not acceptable there. No. Yeah. Do you want to tell me a little more about that? Well, I just thought it was how really, you experienced it. Yeah, I just thought it was really fascinating to talk. I talked to. I feel like I can talk about this a little bit just because I spent ten hours with government officials and academics and social scientists and um, people from the country, you know, who do legislation and activists. And so I listened to about ten hours of this, and then had some great conversations with some activists afterwards. But it just seems to me that it's a very different there. There's so many similarities and it's all very different. Um, but you know, there I just feel like um, it's very behind the times when it comes to um, fat phobia. It's yeah. not recognized in their dictionary yet. Um, and they're, fat people are just really dehumanized and the, the thinking around fat bodies is very twisted. Mm. Um, and you know, they really believe that they're, the causes they think that cause fatness are very much untrue and but it's hard to again to take a step back and look at the real issues because they're complicated and yes. painful so yes. but they're starting that conversation and I was there for an event where the government was instituting all of these incredible um, programs and resources and systems to train educators on how to deal with bullying in schools mm. so that children weren't harassed for being fat in elementary schools anymore and they were offering resources for fat people who needed community and like they're doing really incredible work there um and i thought that was really that blew my mind because here we don't have that um we have a lot of resources through individual people so we're very connected in the states we're spread out pretty far right but yeah. we still connect um and we have not so much in tucson um the political issues here that we collaborate around are a little bit different. Um, still body related though. There's a lot of uh, queer trans mm -hmm. uh, POC events here and we do a lot of work with, um, we have a lot of problems with our initial history which is taking over native land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So working with that and then also working with um, pe people who want to cross the border from Mexico. Um, and, and how inhumanely they're mm. treated mm -hmm. um, and how dangerous that is. So we kind of focus on those areas. Um, but France, you're gonna have to cut this part out. Yes. Because where was Should it going I? with that? Should I? No, you just have to chop it out. Yes. Before what we do here in Arizona. Oh, uh, I remember. Uh, but in the rest of the US, yes. you can start there. Yes. <laughs> in the rest of the US, right. um, you know, there are huge cities that have like large fat acceptance um, resources and communities and events and it's just really incredible and it's really enjoyable to see. We're a little bit louder here, mm. so we do get a lot yes. of pushback, which is very harmful and violent, but at least we're talking about it. Yes. There the conversation is not happening, but the government's stepping in. Yes. So it's very different, different yes. and also very similar. Yes. And I am yes. very interested to see how this plan rolls out that yes. they have proposed. Yes. I hope that makes a huge difference because um, it's the experiences I, I spent the the week there with a lot of very radical fat babes. Yay! And they were amazing. <laughs> they took me to see all of Paris and we just talked about politics the whole time. But the stories they told me were horrifying and really it's a city that's not made for them. It's old, it's small, and the people have this, it is a nationalistic pride in this felt classy, yeah. French woman, oh. you know, so they really hold on to that as, yes. a, as a source of pride yes. and, and these people are, are yes. jeopardizing yes. that. Yes. So that's that was my yes. experience yes. in a nutshell. Yes. It's obviously very complicated. It's, it's very much so also in Italy, like I said to you before, mm -hmm. uh, fat people are really uh, minimized and made to, you know, made to feel bad that they are yeah. certain body shape. So it's, I think Europe is even in Germany and Austria, you know, um, they are very much into uh, the, the, the masculine look, you know, the sporty, you know, they do a lot of sport there. Scandinavian countries, it's all about, you know, having that sporty look. It makes sense. I, I mean, you were talking about how your dad worked in fashion. Um, 
and that was kind of what I kind of heard too from Paris you know it's so fashion based which is based in exclusivity yeah. and women as objects and the most beautiful yes. objects and so it makes sense it's interesting I'll have to do a little more exploring about yeah. the other countries yeah. and kind of where yeah. that comes That'd from. That would be interesting I'd, I'd love to know what you find out. So as you speak you said uh, something about women being objects. Uh, how do you feel we are objects? Are we still objects in society? Uh, what's your thought about that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that we are still I think that I think that a lot of people are reclaiming their power and we are working towards a lot of social change but I think the issue is that there are a lot of very privileged men mm. out there mm. I mean typically it would be like the most privileged of all right so white cisgender straight presenting man who has some money and power feeling like their opinion of us matters more than our opinion of us mm -hmm. and that's kind of what you see in trolling yeah. um my biggest uh i would say uh demographic for trolling is very conservative white young like 20 30 year old men who are obsessed with the gym so they're very fitness obsessed so i i I challenge everything they believe in. I'm happy that you do that, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> well, so they, so they come for me and they really do feel like their opinion is the most important opinion. Oh. And I think that that's where it's a problem. If they say I'm unfuckable, I'm unfuckable. And that's where it becomes a problem because they are not, like, nobody died and made them like God of all of women's bodies and line them up in the order of like fuckability. Like yeah. nobody, has ever asked for that guys nobody has ever asked for that and so when they do it it's just really bizarre and yeah. that's where they feel some possession over you so in that way I feel like of course there's still the sexual objectification yes. we deal with sexual harassment and all of those different things but I I see it morphing into this like ownership in very covert mm -hmm. weird and quite frankly, cowardly ways because mm -hmm. it's done behind a computer to a stranger online. Yes. But yeah, oh, it's definitely an issue. Wow. Okay, yeah. what are your thoughts on uh, um, plastic surgery? It's one of those things where I feel like people should be able to make whatever choice they want. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. And so um, there's a there's a there's a part of me that is sad that we've been taught that certain parts of us can't be XYZ and so therefore mm -hmm. we must reconfigure our right. bodies um, but I also understand the pressures of um, living in today's world so yeah. if that's something that people feel like they need to do I support them in their body autonomy mm -hmm. um, it's not something I would do for myself but that you know we can't we can't own other people's bodies okay. within this body liberation movement right we have to like really allow people to be yeah. liberated in their own way whatever that looks like right and it's not our choice to decide yes. whether they'll regret it or yes. not yes. so that's how i feel about plastic yes. surgery the spiritual movement is you know growing spirituality yeah. and new age and right. like you said yeah. you know uh, the wellness and the yoga and the meditation right um so i want to ask you whether you believe that um some authors some spiritual people make money out of it like does it become a money-making thing also? I think everything becomes a money-making thing eventually. The more popular it gets. I mean, you can look at the body positive movement, right? Very grassroots in the 70s. Um, and it now not only has been, it's, it's complicated because uh, the work that uh, activists or just people who are vulnerable or healers or anybody who does something that challenges the norm, people deserve to be compensated for their work yes. and for their emotional labor and for putting their trauma out there to help other people, right? But then there's like the huge corporation businesses that then start to cash in and capitalize on that. And that's kind of what I was talking about in the beginning where I was saying, mm -hmm. I'm seeing progress and I don't know if I like where it's headed. Right. Because it has become so vast. So this this liberation uh, has turned into positive body positivity, BOPO. Yeah. And it has, um, it's so palatable on purpose. And it's just this vast kind of undefined feel good about your body thing that a lot of companies like to take in and I've only seen it done 
right mm -hmm. a couple times and the way it was done right was they had actual fat people share their actual fat right. stories. Right, right, it, The authenticity yes. was there. Yes. Other than that, it, it's money making. Yes. You know, inclusivity is the new exclusivity. Yes. Yes. And ironically, within that inclusivity, they're still very exclusive, yes. right? We don't see a lot of super fat bodies out there ever. We see very conventionally attractive plus bodies. So I know, right? And all of that. So, so it's progress, but I feel like it's almost folding in on itself at this point. So I would imagine that it happens with everything, you know, and so for me, what I do is I check in with my moral compass. Um, I trust myself mostly in that. I do believe that I deserve to be paid um, for my work. Yes. Um, obviously there's like, you know, if it's a corporation, they're going to be paying my bills and I'll be gifting things to smaller places. You know, that's kind of the way it works. But um, I have to check in my, with myself often to ask myself that question. Yes. Like, how, where am I with this ethically and morally? And then I check in with the people that I trust and respect the most. Yes. And that's kind of my check-in system. Yes. I have yes. about five people that are really fucking changing the world. They are authentic and genuine and beautiful. And so I look to them for guidance once in a while too. Do you want to say who they are? You don't uh, have to. Yeah, Sonia Renee Taylor is probably the number one absolutely incredible human being. Um, she runs the body is not an apology she's in new zealand right now oh. um she's she was like you know if i really believe this is a global s problem and solution i need to be traveling globally so she's there right now and i, I miss her oh. um i check in with um caleb luna they are a they're teaching they're a professor right now in uh the bay area okay and just one of the most brilliant minds I think that I've ever, I've ever encountered. And I just feel like they're so like, why is the world not nominating them for president? Like, oh. <laughs> they're that brilliant. Oh, wow. So, oh God. Yeah. And, um, there's a couple other people that I check in with and just like really close, good friends. Bevan Brandlingham does, uh, coaching Reiki treatments with me oh. and she does, um, different but similar work. And so, somebody to bounce things off of and and really just you know I think every day you just try to be the very best person you can be and that is the best you can do and then yes. you wake up and it's another day yeah. and yeah. you try and do even better and yes. that's so I, I hope that the spirituality movement you know I think people deserve to be paid for their work and also be very hyper aware of how they're doing it yes. as ethically as they possibly can um, I'm starting a merch line which is very exciting yeah. but to find ethically made locally sourced really like legit supporting um, great businesses it was very hard to find those shirts yeah. that go up to 6x yes and yeah. so it's a lot of work to do that yeah. but it's important yeah and it's expensive yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my god yeah. you pay a price for <laughs> for that kind of stuff yeah. but it's it's worth it so yeah. earlier on we were in the pool talking about trust and that's uh, something I want to ask you about how is trust for you or how has it been in your life oh like trusting trusting life trusting yeah. the moment trusting the universe God whatever you want to call it my favorite image on the internet right now is from I think the Instagram handle is rise up a good witch and it's this palm it has like these rainbows flying out of it and it's like kind of 80s looking and the text says the text says maybe you manifested it maybe it's white privilege it's my favorite thing in the entire world and so it kind of gives you that like yeah that question of like how much of uh the things that i that are good that come to my life are things that I've like opened my consciousness to or allowed to come and how much of it is simply because I have all this privilege. Um, I think I, I do both and a lot of it is privilege. Um, my, my platform is built on privilege, yes. but I have been able to kind of let go. This was definitely a trust test for me when I quit my job to write my first book because I just couldn't do everything all at once. Right. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna pay my bills next month. Yeah. And then something would show up and it would be like, we want you here at this place in two weeks. And then, you know, it just like consistently, and I've been doing this for four years. That's amazing. 
consistently. Uh -huh. And I have a partner who's able to lend me money and then I pay him back, my God. So it's like my next paycheck, half of it's gone already, but I'm able to survive and I'm very fortunate for that. Yes. And it's created this, I guess what really has happened is I'm not totally sure what's gonna happen and there still is that concern, but the hyper vigilance and hyper anxiety that I used to feel is not there. Beautiful. Because it's worked for long enough. Yes, yes. And maybe someday it won't, but yeah. I'm I don't know if I'm there yet. Yeah. What about you? I have been, you know, on a journey of uh, trust, I guess, testing my trust. Uh, I had to deal with a lot a lot of unknown, a lot of not knowing where the hell I'm going, you know. Yeah. And it's been tough. But somehow Little by little, little by little step, one step at a time, mm -hmm. I've learned to trust myself more and trust life. And, and, I, and I feel that when I trust, like you said, things come to me. Yeah. You know, when I don't trust and when I'm fearful, then uh, usually stuff that's not good happens. But when I trust and I'm like, whatever, almost, it's almost like a whatever attitude, you know. Take it or leave it. Yeah. yeah, it's like whatever happens, mm -hmm. if it happens, it's good. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't happen, it's also good. Mm -hmm. And I've, I'm learning to do that. I think it's a continuous I think that's, process. Yes, and here you are. And you made I it. So, yeah. so far, so good. Yeah. yeah, and I'm so happy to be with you. I mean, today, really, I, I feel that something has shifted for me over there. Like, I would have never been able to, you know, um, take my clothes off, like, in front of other people and I felt very liberated it's very very free and that know? once you do something like that that you feel like is impossible and then you do it and everything's okay yeah. then that just opens you up to the next step yes and you just keep going right? yeah and I feel like this like uh, you know in life I feel I feel that every little step we take in the unknown it's kind of uh, uh, proves our strength you know our courage yes. And that, That's very powerful, right? Yeah. And that the universe then says, "Okay, you've demonstrated something here. <laughs> let, let me give you a little gift." Yeah. And it's not so much what it is, you know. It could be, you know, swimming in the pool, yeah, nude or whatever, yeah. and, you know, climbing a mountain, you know, or whatever that is, you know. Mm -hmm. But the essence is that you're willing to go beyond, step outside the comfortable. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I experienced that with, with that while traveling and it's the small things that I feel like I can't do because I don't speak the language or understand anything that's happening and then I oh. do it and then I'm like, oh my God, I am such a badass. I had you no are. idea <laughs> that I could do this thing that is simple for other people but very hard for me. And then the next one is a little easier and yeah. the next one's a little easier and you're racking up all these like, yeah. I don't know, it's almost like, it, like irrefutable facts. Yeah. that you can do more than you ever thought you could. So, yeah. let me feel, yeah. Do you feel gratitude is important in life? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I have um, maybe as hardcore of a gratitude practice as a lot of people, but whenever there are really difficult days, my partner and I sit down and we acknowledge the rough stuff and we're like, okay, what are three things that were like really shitty about today? And then you voice them and you get them out of you. Yes. And then what are three things that you're really grateful for? Oh. And it, it switches. My therapist calls it a blue spiral. A blue spiral makes your mind go up into like a more positive place, nice. a red. And, and they're both important, but you want to go back and right, forth, right? right? You don't want to get stuck in red. Yeah. So we do the red yeah. and then we go back to the blue and it really does change things. Yeah. And I think there's so much that, you know, we forget to be grateful for. So it's a good thing to yeah. ponder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you advise to women that have a distorted body image, how can they cope? How can they, what are the steps that you'd advise for them to take? I think the easiest and most important one they could do immediately would be to surround themselves with diverse imagery of other bodies. Because we have learned that we rewire our brains all the time and so we have learned that this one body is desirable and everything else is not. And we can re-teach our brain by exposing it to other bodies yeah. that consistently. I mean, this is like, so you, we can retrain our brains 
to wonderful. see beauty in everything. And um, I made it very easy for people. So on my blog, yeah. on the militantbeggar.com, mm -hmm. there is a resource button at the top. And there's 135 wow. Instagram. Um, I feel like I'm getting the number wrong. But it's a shit ton of Instagram accounts to follow, as well as Facebook pages, as well as Tumblr. Like, wherever you are, all you have to do is you go follow them, mm -hmm. and you just let them fill your feed. Yeah. And as you scroll, every day it will be different. Yeah. And when I did that, I was shocked. And I was kind of like horrified in a way because I'd never I didn't know how to process those things right? Right, right we have stupid fat people funny fat people and evil fat people like none of these none of the pictures I was seeing fit into my paradigm for fat people so it's very challenging and yeah, I didn't yeah. understand it but the more I looked the more beautiful every human became oh. and then the more beautiful those pictures became the more I appreciated the human bodies around me, like at the grocery store. And then the Beautiful. more I appreciated that, I appreciated my body. So it really does have a huge effect. Yes. And it's that easy, because we're yes. so inundated with visual, right. that we need to change that yes. if we want to see a change. I love that. What is the purpose of a human being in this world, do you think, in your view? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out who I am day by day, so I don't know. I, I do think we all serve a different purpose and all of those different purposes are needed. Yeah. My mom taught me this really amazing skill that I don't think she meant to teach me. I just picked it up by listening to her talk about her days. And she will stop and ask herself, what would make me happy right now? Mm. And that sounds ridiculously like elementary. But I, until she told me about this, had never done it. I've never stopped to think. In this very moment, wow. what in the world would make me feel the happiest? And then you go do it. And it's yeah. like, I would really love to yeah. go get a cronut. Yeah. Or I would really love to go to the movies. Yes. Or I would really love to cuddle with my dog. Yeah. Or go hiking. Yes. Or like whatever the fuck yes. it is. Yes. Like it's so individual, yes. right? But like whatever that is, it comes up. And for some reason we stop ourselves. What are your thoughts on uh, high heels? Oh, I used to love them. <laughs> And now I just can't, I just can't. Comfort is way more important to me Oh, now. yeah. <laughs> Hello. I also have on Hello, very flat nice. <laughs> oh. I don't even do wedge sandals anymore. No. Yeah. It's too much, yeah. right? Do you want to tell me about your, um, a little bit about your Expose project? Because I read something about it, but oh, yeah. I'm not too sure really that what it is. So I would like to know. Yeah. Um, we did two different uh, photo shoots here in Tucson um, and opened them up to the public um, back when Facebook was a hot thing. And uh, it was a photographer and I, and we wanted to capture diversity in bodies. And um, I think we could have done more for diversity. A lot of the people who showed up, um, I think we had diversity of size, but I think we could have done a little bit more. But I think it was, I think it was still important, even though it wasn't perfect. And, you know, between the two, it was almost 200 women. Wow. And um, of just everyone within Beautiful. the spectrum. And it was just incredible. And there's no, the pictures themselves are beautiful, but there's no way to explain the energy of, like, blaring, incredibly empowering, fun music. It was probably Beyonce. You can, you know, there's drinks on the table and oh, people wow. just mingle and they're kind of nervous because they've never done this before. Um, you could do fully nude or you could do um, like just wearing panties. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, people were kind of mingling and not sure what to do. And then we hyped them up and then we took off all our clothes and we were like, let's do it. And what yeah. the most beautiful thing that happened within these uh, photo shoots is it, it was one person at a time, but the other fucking 90 ladies yeah. were screaming and cheering. It was like, I get goosebumps because it was like church in a way. Like it was just so spiritual healing and there was so much energy in that yeah. room. You know, people cried yeah. before, during, and after being having their photo wow. taken. They needed lots of hugs wow. and some people were totally into it and comfortable. But there was this massive group of people cheering them on in their most vulnerable moment right yeah. and it was just it's it was so beautiful and I would love to do it again someday 
Um, Please invite me if you do. I yeah. want to be in the photo shoot. It sounds an amazing experience. It is just, it, there's something I will always, always believe this at, because I've experienced it so many times. The internet does amazing things to connect, connect communities and I'm yeah. so grateful for yeah. it because I have found incredible people. Yeah. But there is nothing that can top a room full of fat, empowered babes. Oh my the God. energy that, like the physical energy that you feel. And even, you know, when I was in Paris doing the Fat Phobia event, there were a lot of fat people. Um, and some and some that weren't, but having them in that space, they'd never yeah. experienced that before, yeah. right? Yeah. And just having your energy yeah. interact was just, it's so beyond yes. powerful. Yes. So I go to Portland um, every year for an event called yeah. Knockout, which is like indie designers plus designers okay. as, as a fashion show. And I go because um, it's 300 fat babes. Beautiful. All different kinds. Beautiful. And babes is very like gender neutral, like yeah. all fat babes of all different kinds and they are <laughs> all so powerful and just having them in one room is just yeah mind blowing. So thank you so much, Jess, for today. I, yeah. I, thank you so much. I really I really loved your company. I really love being with you. Oh, and this is such a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, well, you know where you can find Jess Baker yes. on... Uh, TheMilitantBaker.com. Okay, TheMilitantBaker.com. And then all my social media is on there if you want to follow it. And then okay. the, don't forget the resources button. That yeah. will tell you all the books to read and all the pages to follow and... All yeah. the good stuff on there. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up and uh, see you again soon. Woo way! <laughs>